In the first episode of Sugar, you get introduced to John Sugar, who is a huge, massive cinephile. I mean, this guy pines for the golden age of Hollywood. He's seen just about every movie, and the classics, he's seen more than a dozen times. But that's not his day job. His day job is as a private investigator. He specializes in finding those who are missing. His most recent job was finding a Yakuza boss's son. Sugar was able to find him, and he got paid. But that night, as he was waiting to go back home to California, he got an email with a job. And the job really wasn't of interest to him as much as the person who was hiring him. The guy's name was John Siegel. John Siegel is a famous Hollywood producer, one of the best-known Hollywood producers. In fact, he produced most of Sugar's favorite movies. So Sugar jumped at the chance to work with John Siegel. No matter what he needed, Sugar was in. And the next day, when Sugar arrived in Hollywood, the first place he went was John Siegel's residence. He met with him. Siegel appreciated the fact that Sugar was a fan. He clearly knew cinema. He knew the history. But what he appreciated more than that was the recommendations that came along with the name John Sugar. They all spoke glowingly of him. And the reason why John Siegel was reaching out to Sugar is because he needed John Sugar to find his granddaughter, Olivia. She's missing. She is a drug addict. But she's been clean and sober. And every time she's gone missing in the past, it's never been like this. Normally, when she goes missing, she'll reach out to John Siegel for money or, well, money. And he gives it to her. But this time, she hasn't reached out at all. We're going on weeks. So it's got John a little concerned. The other thing that's weird is it seemed like recently, Olivia had gotten her act together. She had become really passionate about women's rights. She was clean. She was sober. So the fact that she's gone missing all of a sudden was a little bit of a surprise to John, who most recently saw her a month ago, and she was doing great. John Siegel is desperate to find his granddaughter, and Sugar is more than happy to take the job. Now, the second place he heads is to his right-hand man slash right-hand woman, Ruby's house. Ruby acts as sort of his secretary, but also his information gatherer. And she's thrilled to see Sugar back from his recent job, but she's also not happy because she got a call from John Siegel's attorney about his contract for this job. And when she first talked to John Siegel's attorney, Ruby told him that Sugar wasn't available. So the fact that they went around her and contacted Sugar on their own undermines her purpose. And she's pissed off about it. And Sugar tries to explain that it's John Siegel, the legendary producer, but Ruby doesn't care. Ruby and Sugar had an agreement. That after this recent job with the Yakuza, Sugar would take some time off. Something he desperately needs. Because Sugar is not doing well. In fact, when he was walking up to Ruby's steps, he dropped to a knee and his arms started shaking. He was able to get control of it pretty quickly, but there's something going on with him. And he's been in denial over it. Ruby, however, who knows him better than just about anybody, has noticed. She wants to hold him to this agreement that they had, but Sugar says, no, I'm taking the job. Because she reminds him of his sister, Jen. When Ruby hears that, she knows it's a lost cause. She knows that Sugar's taking the job. There's nothing she can say to convince him to do otherwise. Now it's just a matter of giving him his mail. He's got his renewed private investigator's license, but also his license to carry. And Sugar's not happy about that. He doesn't like hurting people. He certainly doesn't like carrying guns around. And Ruby knew that. So what she did was she got him a famous gun from a movie. A movie that he loves. And she got it to work in condition. She figured that would be the only way that he would actually carry around a firearm. She was right. When he first heard that he had to carry around a gun, he wasn't happy. But when he found out what the gun was from, yeah, he was more than happy to take it. Right before she hands the gun over, she tells him, you gotta make an appointment with Dr. Vickers. And Sugar tells her, not Ruby, I'm fine. But Ruby knows that's not the case. She doesn't want to hear any excuses. She just wants him to make the doctor's appointment. And he reluctantly agrees that he will. He then gets in his classic car, and he heads off to visit Olivia's apartment. He meets with the building manager, Gary, and Gary explains that Olivia's car hasn't moved in two weeks. They know this because every tenant has a gate opener, and there's a record of it on his computer. Gary then escorts Sugar up to Olivia's apartment, and Sugar starts looking around. But he doesn't get too far in before he's got a gun pointed at him. And it's from Olivia's half-brother, Davey. I'm, I'm sorry, David. Davey is a former child star that really burst onto the scene in a big movie, and he looked like he was poised for greatness, but 
then his star kind of fizzled. He's going to appear in a sequel, and it's supposed to be big. But Davy isn't holding the gun. His sort of muscle, Kenny, is. And right away, Sugar puts his hands up and he explains who he is. He's a private investigator hired by John Siegel to find Olivia. He hands over some identification, and Davy accepts it. Yeah, it looks like it checks out. But then Sugar turns the tables on Davy, questioning why he's in the apartment. Davy tells him that he was sent over there by his father to just wait and see if Olivia is going to show up. But that story doesn't quite check out with Sugar. It doesn't explain why Davy's actually in the apartment. I mean, why wouldn't he just call? Why wouldn't he knock on the door? And Davy tells him, maybe it's because my sister's a junkie? After hearing this, Sugar actually says aloud, Davy, you're a terrible liar. You might be the worst liar I've ever seen. But Olivia clearly isn't here, so there's no reason for you to be here. And that's when, reluctantly, Davy and Kenny leave. It allows Sugar to look around the apartment a little bit, and he does find some things. He finds a photo strip with Olivia and a woman named Melanie Matthews, who's a former rock star. But she also used to be Olivia's stepmom. And then finally, he finds a suitcase with a bunch of items that are in reference to Olivia's mom who passed away. So he takes that with him. But he doesn't go home. He actually decides to head to the bar, the one where those photos with Olivia and Melanie were taken. He parks his car outside, but it's not a great area. So he hires a homeless guy to just watch it for him. The homeless guy's a little surprised, but yeah, why not? He's not doing anything else. And then Sugar heads in the bar. And right away, he finds Melanie. She's already three sheets to the wind. Doesn't take long for Melanie to swoop up next to Sugar. And next thing you know, the two are drinking pretty heavily. But the thing about Sugar is his metabolism works at a rate of 500 times the normal person's when it comes to alcohol. Basically, he can drink as much as he wants and he doesn't get drunk. Well, Melanie, well, she gets drunk. And after about the 15th round, Melanie decides, Sugar, you should take me home. And he says, yeah, okay. Because he does want to find some information about Olivia and what the two were doing. After Sugar escorts Melanie to his car, he goes back and pays off Carl, the homeless guy that he hired to watch the vehicle. But he doesn't just pay him off. He decides to help him out. He gives him a cell phone and he gives him enough money to find a hotel for him and his dog for the night. But he also wants him to reach out to his sister, who lives in Milwaukee, and get his life back in order. Carl's really appreciative of it, and Sugar says, I'll call you tomorrow to make sure that you're on the right track. And then he gets in his car and he heads to Melanie's place. But Sugar made one fatal flaw in this plan. He didn't realize how drunk Melanie really was. I mean, she is loaded. She starts trying to make out with Sugar, but he pulls back. He says, Melanie, you're drunk and I'm not. I'm not going to... I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to take advantage of you. He realizes internally that he's not getting any answers about what happened with Olivia tonight. So he decides to just tuck her into bed and head out. He does write a note on the back of the picture strip that he found, and he does leave it in Melanie's apartment so that she knows why he was there. And then he walks outside to his car. But as he's doing so, he notices that he was being followed this entire time. And he goes up to the van, and it's Kenny. He's being followed by Davy's muscle. And he calls him on it. He says, Kenny, you can't follow me like this, man. It's so obvious that you're a tail. Here, tell Davy this is where I'm staying. And when it checks out, he's going to think you did a great job. But be better at this. And then he finally heads home. Or so it seems. He actually makes a pit stop on the way home. Back to Olivia's apartment. Although he doesn't go in the apartment, he just wants to check out her car. He's got a program on his phone which unlocks the vehicle. It also strips all information from the GPS. But the big find in the vehicle is when he goes to the trunk and he finds a dead body. Now, it's not Olivia's, but it's some guy. And Sugar knows that he has to find out exactly who this guy is before the cops are all over this place. Sugar then heads home. The first thing he does when he arrives is he sets up a bunch of cameras that are hidden so that he can surveil the place. And that night, a couple of the staff members end up giving him his mail, which includes an invitation to a very exclusive club. It's called the Society Polyglot Cosmopolitan. There's nothing much more to it, but Sugar knows exactly what it is. He says to himself, it's an invitation to a party. He then sits down and he starts doing some research. He finds out that Olivia's mom died when she was young in a car crash. And when looking at Olivia's social media... 
He finds that she actually did a monologue that her mom is famous for. He then decides to start looking through that suitcase that contained a bunch of her mother's items, and he finds hidden in there a bunch of Polaroids that were taken that are of her mom and a little seductive. It's got Sugar wondering why exactly she had these photos, and more importantly, who took them. But he then starts dripping blood all over the photos, because when he did that Yakuza job, he got hurt pretty badly in the arm. He stitched himself up, but the stitches must have come undone. So he heads to the shower to regroup and clean it off. And then at night, before he goes to bed, he shoots himself in the neck with some kind of item that completely knocks him out for good. Thank you so much for checking out this recap. Please consider subscribing to the channel and subscribing to my Patreon. Hit thumbs up if you liked it. Smash that thumbs down button if you thought it sucked. If you left a comment, I don't get back to you. I usually don't check the comments unless they're like a super comment. Also, if you don't see the next video up on the end screen, not to worry. It'll be up in a day or two.